Hey, I appreciate you cruising by for my daily devotions, March the 10th. It's Sunday. Soon I will take off and go to go to church and Bible school. I'm going to teach the class today. I look forward to that. Love teaching live. Wonderful thing. And love being a part of the church, which is supposed to happen. Uh, today we're going to look at 1 John 4, Mark chapter 1. Start our journey through the Gospel of Mark. Psalm 68 and Judges chapter 7. We read the third chapter of First John yesterday. Here's the key to prayer, verses 21 through 23. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything, receive from him anything we ask because we obey his commands and, and do what pleases him. The key to receiving whatever you ask is to obey his commands. That, that's, and his commands are really simple. Verse 23 defines them. And this is his command to believe in the name of his son Jesus. To believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ. Believe means to have faith. You put your faith and trust in him. You trust him for everything. It's about trusting Jesus, having believing in his name, believing in the person of Jesus. His name represents his person and his character. And then the rest of the verse, and to love one another as he commanded. Two things: you operate out of faith in Jesus, confidence in Jesus then your heart doesn't condemn you, okay? And you love each other. It's not a feeling. It's a choice to better a other person at, at your own sacrifice, at your cost. You could feel bad about a person and still love them because you do the right thing for them, okay? If you obey those commands, the, the, the promise is that you will receive what you ask for. Now, you wouldn't be asking for the wrong thing if you operate out of obedience to Jesus, would you? You'd be asking for the right thing. And so that's the key to answered prayer. Hang on to that. Hope you won't let go of it. Let's take a minute and pray. Let's jump into the word for today. Father, thank you most of all for Jesus, the difference he makes in our life. I pray that you would speak to us today in your word and change us, God, by, by hearing what you have to say and applying it to our hearts with the power of the Holy Spirit. Make us different because we heard from you. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. 1 John chapter 4. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. There's two, two kinds of spirits, Holy Spirit and unholy spirit. Test the spirits. They all either come from God or the devil. No neutrality in spirits. Make sure it's God's spirit. Verse 2. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. In other words, that he is God's Son who showed up on earth as God's Son miraculously through the virgin birth. Okay, 100% God, 100% man, Jesus. Okay, Verse 3, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, which you've heard is coming and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. The Holy Spirit in you, God in you, is greater than the nonsense going on in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God, and, and whoever knows God listens to us. But whoever does, is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world to, so that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice. In other words, to cover our sin with his blood sent his son to atone for our, for our sin, make payment for it. Uh, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but we love. But if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. <clears throat> we know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges, acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. <clears throat> and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. 
In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world, we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he's a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. He ain't kidding. He's serious. Okay. Mark chapter one. I always look forward to the gospel of Mark. Wow. In the beginning, the beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the son of God. That defines the whole book. Uh, it's all about the good news about Jesus Christ, who is the beginning, okay, the Son of God. And then the whole book affirms that Jesus, the, the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written as Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John came baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thong of whose sandals I'm not worthy to, un to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As John was coming, as, as Jesus, excuse me, was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. At once, the Spirit sent him out into the desert, and he was in the desert 40 days being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and the angels attended to him. As John was, After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. This is the start of Jesus' ministry right here. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. When Jesus calls us to follow him, what do we need to do? Same thing, get up and follow him, you know. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat and with the hired men and followed him. They went to Capernaum. When the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with, with authority? He even gives orders to evil spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother in law was in bed with a fever and they took hold of, they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her by the hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place, and he prayed. We ought to do the same thing. Spend more time in prayer. Simon and his companions went to look for him. When they found him, they exclaimed, everyone's looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I've come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and driving out demons. 
A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees. If you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion, Jesus re reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cured. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell anyone this, th th don't tell this to anyone, but go show yourself to the priests and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news, and as a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places, yet the people still came to him from everywhere. Psalm 68. Little wisdom literature every day. Psalms and Proverbs. Go back, start over with Psalms, Psalms through Proverbs. That's, how, that's what we do. Psalm 68. It's a little bit longer psalm. A psalm of David. May God arise, may his servants be scattered, may the may his foes flee before him. As, as smoke is blown away by the wind, may you blow them away. As max as wax melts before the the fire, may the wicked perish before God. But may the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful. Sing to God, sing praise to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. His name is the Lord and rejoice before him. A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. He sets the lonely in families. He leads forth the prisoners with singing, but the rebellious live in a sun-scorched land. When you went out before your people, O God, when you marched through the wasteland, the earth shook, the heavens poured down rain. Before God, the one in Sinai, before God, the God of Israel, you have abundant showers, O God. You refresh your weary inheritance. Your people settled in it, and from your bounty, O God, you provided for the poor. The Lord announced the word, and great was the company of those who proclaimed it. Kings and armies flee in haste. In the camps, men divide the plunder. Even while you sleep among the campfires, the wings of my dove are sheathed with silver. The, its feathers with shining gold. With, when the Almighty scattered the kings in the land, it was like snow fallen on Zalman. The mountains of Bashan are majestic mountains. Rugged are the mountains of Bashan. Why gaze in envy, O rugged mountain, at the mountain where God chooses to reign, where the Lord himself will dwell forever? The chariots of God are tens of thousands, and thousands of thousands. The Lord has come from Sinai into his sanctuary. You... When you, when you ascended on high, you led captives in your train and received gifts from men, even from the rebellious, that you, O Lord, might dwell there. Praise be to the Lord, to God our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. Our God is a God who saves. From the sovereign Lord comes escape from death. Surely God will crush the heads of the enemies, the hairy crowns of those who go on in their sins. The Lord says, I will bring them from Bashan. I will bring them from the depths of the sea that you may plunge your feet into the blood of your foes while the tongues of your dogs have their share. You, you pro, your procession has come into view, O God, the procession of my God and King into the sanctuary. In front of the, of the singers, after them the musicians, with them are the maidens playing tambourines. Praise God in the great congregation. Praise the Lord in the assembly of Israel. There is the little... There is the little tribe of Benjamin leading them. There the great throng of Judah's princes, and there the princes of Zebulun and Naphtali. Summon your power, O God. Show us your strength, O God, as you have done before. Because of your temple at Jerusalem, kings will bring you gifts. Rebuke the beast among the reeds, the, the herd of bulls among the calves of the nations. Humbled May it bring bars of silver, scatter the nations who delight in war, envoys who come from Egypt. Cush will submit herself to God. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praise to the Lord, to him who rides the ancient skies above, who thunders with mighty voice. Proclaim the power of God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose power is in the skies. You are awesome, O God, in your sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. Praise be 
to God. And then Judges chapter 7. Judges chapter 7. Gideon goes out and defeats the Midianites here. Uh, early in the morning, Jerob Baal, that is Gideon, and all his men camped at the spring of Herod. H-A-R-O-D, different than the Herod was a king in the time of Jesus. The camp of Midian was north of them in the valley near the hill of Moreh. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many men for me to deliver Midian into your hands in order that Israel may not boast against me that her own strength has saved her. Announce now in, to the people, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left while 10,000 remained. But the Lord said to Gideon, there are still too many men. Take them down to the water and I will sift them for you there. If, if I say this one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say th this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So Gideon took the men down to the water. There the Lord told him, separate those who lap the water with their tongues like, do like a dog from those who kneel down to drink. 300 men lapped with their hands and to their mouths. All the rest got down on their knees to drink. The Lord said to Gideon, With the 300 men that, that lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the other men go, each to his own place. So Gideon sent the rest of the Israelites to their tents, but kept the 300 who took over the provisions and the trumpets of the others. Now the camp of Midian lay below him in the valley. During the night, the Lord said to Gideon, Get up, go down against the camp, because I'm going to give it into your hand. If you're afraid to attack it, go down to the camp with your servant Purah and listen to what they are saying. Afterward, you will be encouraged to attack the camp. So he, he and Purah, his servant, went down to the outpost of the camp. The Midianites, the Amalekites, and all the other eastern peoples had settled in the valley thick as locusts. Their camels had no more to their camels could no more be counted than the sand on the seashore. Gideon arrived just as a man was telling his friend his dream. I had a dream, he was saying. A round loaf of barley bread came tumbling into the Midianite camp. It struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. His friend responded, This can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash the Israelite. God has given the Midianites and the whole camp into his hands. When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he worshiped God. He returned to the camp of Israel and called out, Get up! The Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands. Dividing the 300 men into three companies, he placed trumpets and empty jars in the hands of all of them and with torches inside. Watch me, he told them. Follow my lead. When I get, when I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly as I do. When I and all who are with me blow our trumpets, then... From all around the camp, blow yours and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. Gideon, the hundred men with him, reached the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, just after they had changed the guard. They blew their trumpets and broke their jars that were in their hands. The three companies blew the trumpets and smashed the jars, grasping the torches in their left hands and holding in their right hands the trumpets they were to blow. They shouted, A, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. While each man held his position around the camp, all the Midianites ran crying as they fled. When the 300 trumpets sounded, the Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords. The army fled to Bethshita towards Zerara, as far as the border of Abel Meholah near Tabath. The Israelites from Naphtali, Asher, and all Manasseh were called out and they pursued the Midianites. Gideon sent messengers throughout the hill country of Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites and seize the waters of the Jordan ahead of them as far as Beth Bara. So all the men of Ephraim were called out, and they took the waters of the Jordan as far as Beth Bara. They also captured two of the Midianite leaders, Oreb and Zeb. They killed Oreb on the rock of Oreb and Zeb at the winepress of Zeb. They pursued the Midianites and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon, who was by the Jordan. God moved, gave him the victory. Do, for, do that for us when we trust him. Let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking to us. Change our lives from the inside out by the truth of your word. Heavenly Father, we pray in Jesus' name, amen.